Hey, this is Chris Wells, the Bass Chaplain, and this is Next Steps. If you pray to receive Christ at a sportsman's or a wild game banquet or anywhere for that matter, we're glad you're here. And this is day three, and we're going to be talking about prayer today. And yesterday, we talked about spending time with God and how important that is. As a matter of fact, we said it like this. We said if you're too busy to spend time with God, then you're busier than God created you to be. It's the most important thing that a Christian can do. Now we talked about two things that you need to do when you spend time with God. Number one is pray, and number two is study your Bible. Okay, today we're gonna to talk about prayer, and so we're gonna to go to God in prayer right now and invite him to be with us. Father God, we just pray right now that your spirit would be with us. We ask that you'd speak to our hearts, that you'd still our spirits, and you would teach us the things that you want us to know about praying to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now, there are a lot of misnomers about prayer out there. Some people are thinking, you know, they pray because they pray standing up and they pray great, eloquent prayers. And if they pray a lot of words, they're okay with God. But there's some reasons that God wants us to pray. And the first of all is just because He's commanded us to pray. He commanded us. He says, pray in the Spirit on all occasions. He says, don't be anxious for anything, but by prayer and supplication, submit your request to God that He will hear you. He invites us to do that. He commands us to do that. Let me tell you what else. And the reason that we pray is because prayer moves our dependence off of ourselves and on to God. We let God know that we're dependent totally upon you and not our power, but your power. There's another reason that we pray. It's because God desires to have relationship with us. He invites us. He's moved us from death to life. He's grafted us in the vine. He has adopted us as his children. We went from being far from God to being sons, children of God. And he invites us as a father-child relationship to have relationship with him. That is awesome. That really is. So we're going to look uh, in the Bible right now. And remember, uh, if you don't have a Bible, you can contact chriswells.org, and I'll send you a Bible. And if you need to pause this video to find this scripture, we're going to be looking at the book of Matthew, chapter 6. And I'm going to start reading at verse 5. So Matthew, chapter 6, verse 5. And this is what it says. It says, Whenever you pray... You must not be like the hypocrites because they pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by people. But I assure you, they've got their reward. But when you pray, go into your private room, shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Now when you pray, don't babble like the idolaters since they imagine they'll be heard for their many words. Don't be like them because your Father knows the things you need before you ask Him. And Jesus goes on and gives us the model prayer. We know it is the Lord's Prayer. And the first thing He says in the Lord's Prayer is you address God as your Father. And that is truly, truly awesome. Now listen, there are a lot of times when I had great intentions of praying. And sometimes, and this is going to be a very practical message for you here today, sometimes I would sit down and I would kneel beside my bed and I'd say, Dear God, and I'd fall asleep. I would fall asleep on God. Even though I had the greatest intentions in the world, sometimes I would get down there. I'd had this a lot of times. I'll begin to pray, and I'll say, Dear God, I'll pray, Oh, I wonder where I left my phone. Oh, did I turn off the coffee pot? My mind begins to wander. In 1990, I read a book by a guy named Bill Hybels. He was pastor of one of the largest churches in the world at the time. And you know what he said? He said that he had problems falling asleep on God. That he had problems with his mind wandering. Well, what was his answer? His answer was this to get an old-fashioned notebook and some kind of writing utensil. And he said, you need to write out your prayers. Now, I'm not talking about you people who can, or like songwriters and English lawyer, you make every third word rhyme. I'm talking about dear God, dear Father. Let me tell you what that'll do. It'll do several things in your life. Number one, it will slow you down. You can't write as fast as you think, okay? It'll slow you down. It'll help you focus on God, okay? We desperately live in a world that needs to slow down. We're always go, go, go. And God says, if you really want to know me, be still. Be still and know that I am God. Writing out your prayers will slow you down. Let me tell you what else it'll do. It will help you remember what you pray. A lot of times when I speak, I'll ask people, I'll say, how many of you have ever prayed a prayer and God didn't answer your prayer? And a lot of people will raise their hands. And this is what I say, that's a trick question because I believe that God answers every single prayer. It's just that sometimes the answer is no, you can't do that. Sometimes the answer is yes. Sometimes the answer is wait. But when you write out your prayers, even when you forget what you prayed about, you will go back and you look at that notebook and you go, wow, I prayed about that, and I forgot I even prayed about it, but God still answered that prayer. And what will happen is it will begin to build a foundation of faith 
in your life. And you'll understand that when you take things to God, God can be trusted with the things that you take to Him. Let me tell you what else it'll do. When you um, write out your prayers, it will help you watch what you say. You'll focus on God better. A lot of times when people pray, and I'm guilty of this too, if I go down to my church and my pastor says, Brother Chris, will you pray? I usually say, Father God, thank you, Father God, 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 and we just do that. When you write out your prayers, you won't write Father God, Father God, Father God. It'll help you watch what you say, and you'll begin to build that relationship with God like God wants to have with you. Now listen, there are a lot of times when, uh, when people talk about spending time with God and, and praying, you can pray anytime, but the most important time you have is your intimate time with God. That regular time when you spend with Him, that time like we're doing right now where you just get somewhere alone and you begin to pray. Pray and you will see God moving in your life. I'm praying for you today and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow.